There have been a number of new improvements to uh, the graph editor in Maya 2013, uh, one of which is the ability to preview your animations in a stepped mode. So what you can see here is I've got a keyframe animation, and I've basically got a series of poses essentially that I've animated between with interpolation between them. The first thing I want to do here actually is just take the master transform node here and I'm going to mute the Z translation. And by doing that, I can actually just have my character kind of run in place so that I can begin to analyze the poses. Now this is not new, this has been around for a while. But one thing I want to be able to do is actually go in and get a better idea of what my poses for this animation look like. So I'll grab the top node of my character here. Let's actually pull back and grab that main node there. Go up to the highest level, there we go. And I want to expand that to show all the underlying curves. Now the curves that I'm seeing here, again, are based on a series of poses. So I have one pose to the next, but I have interpolation between them. So what I want to do is just simply right click in the timeline and I can just convert this into a stepped preview mode. Now what that allows me to do is it allows me to step through my timeline and basically just pop from pose to pose so that I can get a really clear idea of what my poses look like without the kind of interference of the interpolation. Now this is simply a preview mode. I can very quickly and easily go back and forth between this mode and my standard mode and now I have all of my interpolation back as I normally would. So in this animation you can see I have my character running jumping, falling, landing, and then continuing to run. This animation contains a number of curves on many different control objects, and if I wanted to change the overall rate of this animation at any given point, it would involve dealing with lots of keys on many curves. So as you can see here, I've got this kind of arc in the middle which represents the jump. So if I wanted to retime just that particular section of the curve, or the animation, I can go into the new retiming tool in my 2013, and I can drop down timing markers, which would allow me to essentially retime sections of my curve. So I can speed up or slow down entire chunks of curves independently of the rest of the curves. Now where this really becomes powerful is the ability to insert additional markers that would then allow me to change the timing within a certain boundary, within a certain range of curves. So I can have my animation slow down at the beginning of the jump and then speed up as he lands in this case, or I can change that and have him speed up at the beginning of the jump and slow down at the end. So as you can see, this is a really flexible tool and a very powerful tool for dealing uh, with retiming of, of complex animations. There have been a number of changes to referencing in My2013 that are both directly and indirectly related to animation. So referencing is very commonly used in animation workflows where you want to bring characters into environments, for instance. So here I have a, an environment with no character. If I wanted to create a reference, I can do that and I can manage the reference directly from the outliner. So if I right click on my outliner, I can now go in and first of all, create a reference. So I'll just simply point this to my first animation file. So the contents of that file will get loaded into my scene, and now what you'll see is that I have a list of objects in my scene that uh, are from the reference, and then I have a node representing the reference itself. If I expand that, you can actually see the contents of that reference in a graphical view. But you can also right-click directly on the reference, and you can access all of the various referencing referencing related um, options. For instance, duplicating the reference, importing the reference, removing or replacing the reference, and so on. So for instance, if I were to go in and uh, move this object around just using kind of my main master control node, I'll just move him so that he starts out on the other end of the room, and I'll maybe rotate that around so he faces in a different direction. Now everything I've done here has been a reference edit on top of the reference file. So if I wanted to swap this out with another version of the animation, traditionally I'd have to go into the reference editor. Now I can just simply right click on this reference node, go into my reference pull down menu, and I can simply replace this reference with another file. So I'll choose the second animation file. So now you can see it's brought in that new file, and if I play this back, now I have a different animation that has inherited that same reference edit, which was the global offset. 
So as another example, if I wanted to remove that reference edit, rather than going to the editor now, I can right click in the outliner, and within the outliner I have the access to the reference edits for that particular uh, reference. I can go in here now and I can simply select these reference edits and just remove them and I'll have the original placement of my object back, all without ever having to leave the outliner. So let's go in and take a closer look at the animation for this referenced character. So I'm going to scrub through this animation until I get to the jump and we'll kind of get to the highest point of the jump. And let's say that I wanted to make a couple of modifications here. I'll grab the hip controller which allows me to control the vertical offset. And what you'll see here is that the hip controller has curves on it, but those curves are not editable or accessible. Now this is the way Maya's referencing has traditionally worked. So if I wanted to edit this, I'd have to go to the original file. Now what I can do is I can go into the preferences and under the animation settings for preferences, I have the ability to allow referenced curves to be edited. So if I save that and then I just refresh my graph editor here, what you can see here is I can actually take that curve now and I can begin to edit it. So let's say that I wanted to raise his uh, body up a little bit or down. Let's actually raise him up a little bit. So if I wanted to see that relative to the original animation, one of the nice things that I can do here is I can go in and I can actually turn on my buffer curves. So if I show buffer curves, and then for this particular curve, I'll go in and I'll set my buffer curve to be displaying or in a display mode to show the reference. And that will show me the relationship. Let me actually just frame in on these, these few here. That will show me the relationship between the offset that I just made and the underlying reference curve. So if I make an offset, say for instance, that's too extreme, or let's say that I kind of buckle his knees here and I realize that I've made a mistake with that edit. What I can do is I can just go under curves and I can set this to swap buffer curve and that will swap the new curve or rather the edited curve with the original underlying animation curve that exists in the reference file. Now I can go in and I can make changes again Whoops, and I can kind of correct the problems that I had before. So one thing to point out is that these are all saved as reference edits. So as I begin to edit these curves, I can actually view those as, re as reference edits. So if I go to the outliner, I can right click, go into my reference menu, go into my edits, and you can see these were actually edited, um, or rather applied as reference edits to the curves themselves. So now I can go in and I can bake these reference edits out so that they apply to the original file. Um, and then that way I would have them in the original source file or I could leave them as reference edits on top of that file.